Time for some new tires on my road bike. Schwalbe Pro One, tubeless ready. Let's swap them out. All right, first let's talk about what we'll need. Barking dogs in the background. Two tires, obviously. Harry! Schwalbe Pro One, these are their tubeless ready addition. Stands, tubeless sealant. Depending on how you want to put your sealant in, you can get one of these injector bad Larrys. If you go through the uh, valve core, or you can just use like a, uh, you could probably actually just shake this up and use this about two ounces or so. These are 30s, nice and wide, which I've been running lately. These are Pirelli 30s on here. I always love one of those too, you know. Let's start by taking these off. No, no. Oh my God, so many barking dogs. Stop. Okay, so this one, I think I put it on. Wow, so much dog barking. It's gonna just be a blooper reel of me yelling, Harry! This one still has a little bit of life left. You can see the wear mark right here, kind of, sort of. There's still a little bit left, but there's no more wear mark on my rear tire. And it's actually flat. Actually, I don't know if you can tell here, but it is quite flat in the middle. The wear mark is no longer visible. Some tires have two wear marks, like a Conti uh, GP5000 will have two wear marks, one a little bit deeper than the other, so you know like once one is gone, it's like almost time to change. Once the second one gone, time to change. These unfortunately only have one, the Pirellis at least. Let's see what the Schwalbe's have. They have a wear mark. This is the brand new tire. Yep, there's like a, so it's just like a little dimple right there. And basically what it is, is like once it's worn away and there's no more dimple, it means that it's time to change the tire. This one only has one too. I love the two dimple system that Continental has. Um, so yeah. I do love my tubeless uh, setup. I have tubeless on basically, actually all my bikes, except for my Klein mountain bike, which I don't really ride that much. It's more just for show. Um, and I love tubeless. It was a little bit scary at first. I think some people are still intimidated by it, but um, you know, knock on whatever the hell you want to knock on this wood here. Um, surprise the dogs, all oh, the dogs did bark. Just cause you stop it. These Pirellis, I'm sure I had some punctures. Right, actually, if you look nice and closely, you can see that there's maybe some glass or some stuff embedded in some, um, but I never actually had like a puncture on the side of the road where I had to stop. I ride my bike quite a bit. I put these on in October and I've probably ridden October, November, December, January, February, March, probably like five, six, maybe 7,000 miles since then, probably closer to 6,000 miles since then. And I had no times where I had to stop on the side of the road and change out a flat, put a plug in or swap out a tube. I do carry a tube with me on my road bike in here, um, but didn't have to swap them, which is nice. So let's take this out, take some air out of this. There's gonna be a little bit of tubeless sealant in here. Still, I did top it off a couple months ago. You can see it coming out a little bit on my finger. All right, so now that the air is out, just like you would, Pop the bead, go all the way around on one side, flip it, unseat the bead on the other side. See, sealant's not that scary. It's all safe. it's all in there. It wants to be in there. Um, okay, so now we'll take my tire levers. These Pedro's heavy duty tire levers are so good. I don't really like to carry them with me because they're big. They don't fit in my saddlebag that well, but look at this bad boy. He's thick. This is a specialized one. Not bad, nice and small. And I've got some Continental ones, the better ones that sort of clamp together. Also have this little hook so you can hook it to your spoke. And then maybe the worst ones going, these Continental, the flat ones, no good. Let me get them both like this first. There we go, boom. Clip one, use the other, there we go. Just all the way around the outside, a little bit of leaking sealant. And just like that. Oh. Sealant a little messy, messier than a tube, right? But you'll see the sealant still inside there. Got a little bit on the ground. We'll have to clean that up in a little bit. But this tire is not fully shot, so I'm gonna hold on to it. I'll probably never end up using it. I do this all the time. I hold on to old tires, old tubes, never end up using them. But for now, I'm just gonna throw it out on my back deck and deal with it a little bit later. 
All right, so now we have just the wheel here, just wiping off the inside. Dog is parking in the background. Harry, cut it out. A little bit of gooped up sealant around the valve inside here. You don't really have to clean this up too thoroughly, but it is good to wipe down all the rim tape. Shouldn't be any gashes in there, right? Because the seal was holding nice, but wipe that all out, get all the old sealant out of there. So now we have a tubeless ready wheel. These are Bontrager, Aeolus, all these names that you don't really know how to pronounce because you just see them online. Schwalbe, Schwalbe. I think it's Schwalbe. Aeolus. A-E-O-L-U-S. -E Aeolus Ford. I bought these wheels. They came on my Trekamanda that I had before it cracked. Um, cracked that bike. There was a crack in the chain stay, like right. Sorry, the seat stay, like right here. Can you see that? So yeah, I had, a, I had an Amanda that came with these wheels. There was a crack right here. Um, replaced it with the Cervelo, but kept all the same components, kept the wheels, kept the drivetrain. There's a little bit of sealing on the outside, but I'm gonna wait to do the full clean until after I put the tire on. One thing people might not know about tires is there is a specific rotation of the tire. It's usually on the side. You will see it where it shows you like your PSI or your width or whatever. This tire does have arrows on it. Just like, I don't know, pattern or whatever. So to me, the arrow should be going forward, right? When you're rotating this way. When you rotate this way, the arrow goes forward. Not all uh, tires have that. Right here, it's saying max 5.5 bar, 80 PSI. And you'll see right here, it says rotation, which is, yeah, the same way as the arrows. So you're gonna wanna make sure that when you mount the tire on the wheel, it rotates in this direction. So that means this way, right? The wheel will sit there with the rotor on the non-drive side. So the tire will go on this way. And I like to line up my labels. So here it says Aeolus, Aeolus, Schwabi. I like to line all those up so they're in line. So let's get one half of that on first. Let's go back down here. Okay, so we're down on the ground. We're just lining up one full side. Back it all the way around. Get it over, boom. Okay, so one side is on, nice and easy. Making sure these labels are lined up. It's really not the most important thing in the world, but it is important to me. I don't think it matters for everyone, but I like to have everything all centered up. Boom, just like that. Okay, so now we'll put the other side on because once you have both sides on, it is hard to like wiggle the uh, tire around. I like to do the lining up of the logos first. So now we're gonna get this all the way around. And I like to put my sealing in through the valve because I think it is less messy that way. But basically what you gotta do is you gotta get both sides on first. Let's see how hard, I've never used Schwalbe's before. These are my first Schwalbe's. See how hard they are to get on. Wow, pure finger strength. Boom, just like that. Easy. Much, much easier than the Continental GPs that I've used in the past. The 5000s are so hard, especially the tubeless ones. So now I'm going to take my pump and pump it up and seat the bead. So then I can take the air out again, kind of multi-step process, then remove the valve core and put the sealant in. So let's pump this bad boy up. That's just a floor pump, folks. That's no CO2, that's not a compressor or anything like that. Just a floor pump. I'm only at uh, 35 PSI so far, so let's get in a little bit more. Okay, so that is 60 PSI. All right, so tire on the wheel, but there's no sealant inside, so we gotta get the sealant in. So now I'll take the air back out, but what will happen is the bead that's seated, right? The bead of the tire that's inside the rim will stay attached. So less likely to leak sealant. So I'm taking all the pressure back out. I'm gonna be careful not to pop the bead. So now there's no more air in there. Take my valve core remover. Boom, put this right here. And just twist out the valve core. Boom, nice and easy. There's the valve core. So now you can inject the sealant through here. So I'm gonna flip this upside down, put it down on the ground. Let's bring the camera down there. 
shake up the sealant real good. This goes right in here, like so. Boom. I'm gonna go to two ounces on this one because it's brand new and it's a 30. And sometimes when I top it off, I'll add like an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half. Uh, you know, if it, if it dries out, sealant does dry out every once in a while. I think the bead might have just come unpopped. That's okay. Let's try it. Filling it up to the two. Boom. Nice and slow, nice and gentle. Put the plunger in. Gently inject the sealant through the valve core. It's okay if a little bit leaks out around the valve. That's gonna happen. All right, now the valve core is gonna go back in like so. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. Slowly rotate. You see there's a little bit of a mess. But I promise you the mess is worth it. The mess is worth it. As long as you're not dealing with the mess on the side of the road, I think this late, this level of mess is worth it. No problem washing these floors. So let's put the air back in the tire. 30 PSI. Usually with tubeless, I run my front one about 60. Boom, that's 60 PSI. And would you look at that? That's a wheel with a tubeless tire and sealant inside. Like you rotate it a couple times. So the sealant goes all around. Gets around the bead. Do one of these. Move it all the way around, like sort of a figure eight motion. Front wheel done. Let's wipe it clean real quick and then put it back on the bike. Microfiber, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Just wipe it down all around. I like having a clean bike. This doesn't really help anything performance wise and, or anything like that, but I like to, I like the idea of treating my bikes nicely so they treat me nicely. I try to keep them clean as often as possible. I think there's a little, to, you know, a little bit of zen in cleaning your bike, getting, you know, good at it, getting efficient at it. And I love to use isopropyl alcohol. It's cheap, you can buy it in bulk. And a lot of these sort of cycling specific things are like way too expensive. I use a lot of simple green as well. I buy the big, you know, it's like two or three gallon thing. And uh, yeah, just dilute it properly. And there you have it. Logo's a little bit off. It's okay, I'm not gonna move it around now. No one really cares. So yeah, I might've just slipped a little bit, but no, actually that one looks good. This one looks off, strange doesn't really matter. Um, okay, you'll see there's a little bit of sealant here, but it's no big deal. I'll just wipe right out just like that. And tire's holding pressure, no problem. So let's put it back on. Boom, there you have it. Then we'll let it spin just a little bit. Really get that sealant working around inside there. And yeah, that's the front one done. Gonna do the back one now. All right, let's repeat the process for the rear wheel first. Go my front ring. I got my uh, chain rings in the smaller. I'm gonna bring the rear as far over as it will go. It's also a good time to clean your bike when the wheel is off. Makes it that much easier. Probably clear, clean the cassette real quick too. Went on kind of a wet ride yesterday. Wiped the bike down kind of quickly. Um, we're gonna wipe it down a little bit more. Take all this air out first. Swap out the tire first, then do a wipe down. And then I'm gonna go out and ride. It's a little windy, but should be nice. All right, all the way, still a little bit more. Still coming, still coming. If you really wanna expedite the process, you can't just remove the valve core, I guess. Sometimes you remove the valve core, the valve itself might start rotating. You obviously don't want that to rotate. There's sort of a, you know, there's the valve here. There's a little I don't know, lock washer thing. I don't know, I don't know the terms. I'm not a bike mechanic. Let's make that clear, I'm not a bike mechanic. And then a little O-ring here, a little rubber stopper so that keeps all the air in. But yeah, 
The air is now out of this tire, so we're gonna unseat it again. A little bit of extra sealing on this one. This one's a little messy. I am gonna take it outside. Okay, so old tire off the rear, wiping it clean again. Sometimes it turns into like silly stringy, spider webby type of, this means the sealant is doing its job. It, it has been coagulated and it, you know, instead of air seep, seeping out, it filled the gap and it did its job. So throwing that in the trash can. There's your valve. This is the, you know, the other rubber side. Boom, boom. Let's put the other tire on the wheel. Same thing, being mindful of the rotation. The arrows are super helpful on these. I'm gonna try to line up those logos again. All the way around on one side, right over the lip. Ow. Make sure those are lined up, the labels. Line up on this side, pretty lined up, not quite, a little bit off. All the way around again. This one proving to be a little bit more difficult. Sometimes it depends on like where the tire is, is inside the rim, right? Like you get a little bit more wiggle room if it's all the way in the middle, the middle of the rim width here, right? So like, just gives yourself, I mean, it's really a game of millimeters, right? Try not to use a tire lever when I'm doing this. This one's being a little bit more of a pain in the ass. Work a little bit of material around. I'm gonna have to put gloves on for this one. We'll see. All right, so just that little gap right there. Now, sometimes, while we have this gap, what you'll want to do, if you don't have an injector to put the sealant in here, you can literally just pour it into there. Use a measuring cup, make sure you have the two ounces that you need, pour it in there, right? So the sealant would go in there. I'm not doing that because I think that is messier and I like to use the injector, but it goes in there, right? And you would just slowly rotate it. So then technically, theoretically, the sealant would be sitting at the bottom and then you'd be able to put the bead on. Man, that first one was so easy. I mean, this is just the way it is, right? It's just how it happens sometimes. I'm gonna make sure that the tire's all in the middle. Give myself as much slack as possible. We're getting there. Almost there. A little bit at a time. Almost there. I keep saying that. And there you go. Woo! Second one is a little bit more struggle than the first one, but now you have it on there. Now, since I already have the valve core out, I think I'm just gonna inject the sealant and then fill her up. Let's try that. All right, so that means I'm not gonna put air in the tire first. I'm just gonna go straight to the sealant. The valve core is already out, so I'm not gonna seat the bead first. We'll see if this was a good idea or not. Boom, sits in there nicely, another, another two ounces, plunger, nice and gentle, All right, you don't need to be forceful with it, a rubber gasket on this, you've seen better days, about sealing all the way in, a little bit more on the, on the ground this time, that's okay. Just a fraction of an ounce. Valve core is gonna go back in and clean that off a little bit. Should be wearing gloves while I'm doing this. Back to the pump. About 65 PSI in the rear. Hear those little pops. It means right. the bead, the tire on the inside of the rim is going and seating itself. See that little jump? I was like one or the other, you know, it doesn't all happen at once, a little bit at a time. I'm actually gonna over inflate it slightly to make sure the bead is fully seated. Perfect. Close the valve. There you have it. Second wheel with sealant in a new tire. Just like that. These labels look a little bit better. All lined up nicely. And yeah, so I'm gonna wipe the cassette clean a little bit, put the wheel back on, but 
That is how you install new tubeless tires on your tubeless setup wheels. Not all wheels are created equally. Not all tires are created equally. Some are gonna be easier. Some are gonna be harder. Uh, some wheels are not built for tubeless. Some tires are not meant to be set up tubeless. So make sure you're buying the right thing when you do. But yeah, like I said, Schwabi Pro 1s, first time using them. The Pirelli Zeros that I had were great. I loved them. Uh, they just were, you know, sort of at their end. I'll save the one, toss the other. Uh, if anyone has good ideas on what to do with like old tires or old tubes, let me know in the comments below. Uh, a lot of the times, I think those things just get wasted. You know, wasted after the fact, obviously you're using them. Um, but yeah, I'm just working the sealant into all the cracks and corners and crevices. I'm gonna clean this cassette and I'm gonna get out riding. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about tubeless setups, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribing or liking this video if it was helpful. It was fun for me. I like doing things on my bike that I can do. There's a lot of stuff I can't do. I go to the, my local bike shop, MDX, to take care of those things. But stuff like swapping out a tire, feels good. A little productive. I think if you spend so much time on your bike like me, you should know how to work on your bike a little bit. You should know how to clean it. Swapping out tires is relatively simple, tubeless or not. So there you have it. Tubeless tire setup. Thanks for watching. Decaf left, regular right. Decaf left, regular right. It's very challenging work. <laughs>